Well, hello there, and thanks for tuning in to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Borkor, your host, as you probably know if you're watching me. Thanks very much for taking the time out of your busy schedules to check out this new car review of a 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning all-electric pickup truck. I want to thank you very much uh, for your interest in this, and also I want to thank the folks at Fines Ford here in Bolton. Uh, I'm going to bring out one of their guys in a sec to talk a little bit about who they are and what's going on, what they're seeing in the electric pickup truck market space. Um, they're very excited, of course, uh, Ford being the first to, to come out uh, over about a year and a half ago with an all-electric version of the number one selling vehicle globally. Yes, the F-150 pickup truck sells more vehicles globally than anything else around the world. It's quite a big feat. And here in North America, we love, we in general, I'm not really including myself, love big vehicles, big pickup trucks and big SUVs. And I know why a lot of them are used for different uh, elements. So uh, sit back, relax, enjoy this episode as I walk you through a quick look of this 2022 F-150 Lightning. All right, so before I get really into this review, I do want to introduce Carlos. How are you, sir? Hi, good to meet you. Good. You too. Good. Thanks for having me come out to your fine dealership, uh -huh, pun intended. Uh, now, Carlos and I met a few months back. He participated in a local EV event and brought the, this beautiful F-150 with him. So what I wanted to just get is your, your perspective, Carlos. Um, first of all, you know, how the reception that you've seen for your customers, maybe you can explain to our viewers a little bit about your dealership, kind of what your client base is like, just sure. to frame it up with uh, regards to the F-150. Yeah, well, we're a family owned dealership. We've been in Bolton for 35 years. Um, we've been electric vehicle certified since the very first electric uh, escape or okay. the hybrid escape uh -huh. rather. Um, and uh, you know, we've had customers really embrace uh, electric vehicles, uh, starting with the Mach-E uh, two years ago and now with the Lightning. Mm -hmm. uh, we're uh, at some level a commuter town, so uh, you know that, yeah. that's important for uh, that type of customer. Um, but at the same time, you know, we've been happy to uh, evolve with the new technology and the Lightning is as uh, exciting as you get when it comes to electric vehicles. But uh, having driven this vehicle as my daily driver for the last uh, few months, mm -hmm. I can say it drives just like an F-150. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ford has taken a lot of pride in, in making this the, the electric truck for them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and the, the other thing, so it drives just like an F-150, um, except when you hit the accelerator. And then <laughs> as I've taken to describing, it's unnecessarily fast for exactly. a truck this size. Right. Uh, like exactly. any electric vehicle, I guess the, you know, the number one question is range, range mm -hmm. anxiety, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, uh, has, this has almost a 500 kilometer range with the extended battery. And generally that's kind of made people much more at ease. And one thing that you know, I have seen some emails, seen some uh, headlines and stuff like that, you know, and we talked about this just before I press the record button, is some of the price hiking that we're seeing going on in the industry. Obviously, it's a supply and dem demand market still. EVs are very much in demand. I, I think the wait lists are probably coming down, but maybe you could talk a little bit about what your experience has been in that whole order process, but in, in some of these inflated prices that we're seeing in, in, in other parts of, of well, North America in general. Sure, I think supply and demand obviously has created you know, a different uh, situation uh, in the automotive marketplace. Mm -hmm. We're proud to say that we've never sold a vehicle over MSRP. We do not have a markup. Uh, market, you know, pricing. You don't have some special bolt-in special package pricing or right, whatever. Right, <laughs> right. And I think, you know, with electric vehicles, yeah. customers are kind of used to paying the price, right? right? Tesla mm -hmm. has done a, a great job of saying this is the price of the vehicle. There's no mm -hmm. real negotiation. So, you know, we're proud to say that uh, with all of our electric vehicles, we, we sell them at the price that, that Ford has listed them at. We're not here for a quick buck. Uh, you know, we yeah. take a lot of pride in the fact that our name is on the building. When it comes to yeah. um, wait times, yep. Uh, again, you know, if you came in right now and you said you wanted to order order a Lightning, you could probably be looking at anywhere from six to twelve months. Okay, I think mm -hmm. it depends on the trim level and the yep. battery. Mm -hmm. um, with a electric uh, Mustang, the Mach E, you know, we have incoming units that are not yet sold. Okay, um, and the same is true of of the Lightning. Mm -hmm. With you know, with the situation of inventory right now, I think I like to say if you're flexible, mm -hmm. uh, you're probably going to get something much sooner. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, if you're very specific and particular about exactly what you want, well, then we'll place an order for you and, and you'll be in the queue. Great. But we have allocation and, okay. you know, you could come in, you could place an order today and, you know, and probably be driving it in the next and few months. Do you see that allocation getting even better in 2023? Uh, uh, absolutely, we mm -hmm. do. I think, okay. you know, the first launch year was yeah. The limited numbers for for all stores mm -hmm. and uh, for 23 we've been given our number and uh, we mm -hmm. have un, uh, unsold allocation Good. if you will so okay. yeah if anyone came in we have no problem selling them selling them a truck excellent excellent yeah, it is well thank you very much for your time I'm going to get into the review but yeah for anybody local that's watching this if you want more information you can check out finds Ford here in Bolton check ask for Carlos uh, him and his staff will be happy to help you out so there's your plug for you sir I appreciate it thanks so now much I'm going to get into the review thank you Appreciate it. All right, so we, we start off with the design of the F-150 Lightning. Well, there's really not much to talk about because it is an F-150 product, right? There's no redesign, really. Some small elements like some lighting and some treatments. You know, we have our charging ports and this kind of thing. But for all intents and purposes, it's taking the same platform that we see today come out for the F-150 and electrifying it. But though doing it in a very well engineered and well thought out manner, right? So you still have that nice low center of gravity. And, and that's why, you know, when Carlos mentioned about customers experiencing the, these and seeing the difference on how this will handle, not only from a throttle and from acceleration, but from an overall handling capability, they are blown away by the capabilities of electrified pickup trucks. And the F-150 is no exception to that. So design language is gonna be very similar, right? It's got the boxy, it's got your quad cab for comfortable space for five people. It's got a good sized bed with the tailgate. You can put your four by eight sheets in. Lots of working environments, of course. Carlo, uh, Carlos mentioned the frunk, which I'll show you in a sec, and of course the tail. So a lot of different areas that from a, uh, um, for users that need these as workspaces, uh, their daily work is working in a construction or home building or whatever that case is. These offer a ton of flexibility and capabilities, as you know, especially with the, with the 9.7, I think it is, or the nine plus kilowatt hour uh, vehicle to load technology uh, that you ha you can access through the front or the back through different connections. So design wise, really not much more to spend on. It's a truck. It looks like a truck um, uh, and, and goes like a truck only in a better way because it's all electric. Now, before I get into the interior, let's look at the, both the front and the trunk elements or the be pickup bed in this case. So you can open the front in, in, from the inside, of course, through the control panel or through the key fob. Uh, if I can read this right, I press it twice and it should let me open it up. So here we go. We got our beeping and it's a full power trunk, as you can see, that opens up. And, you know, again, as I said with Carlos, Ford was the first to think about this, right, to not not block this off with a fake grill, keep it, keep it static, and just open the top like Rivian does. Again, I'm not bashing Rivian, I'm just saying that that is a difference that I think Rivian missed the boat out on them. They really should have thought about that because you have it's all that little bit more useful space in the element that you don't have to lift stuff up and over. So if you're working a construction site and you're throwing in bags of asphalt or concrete or whatever, um, you know, drywall materials, right? Uh, all that kind of stuff, barrels or whatever, you know, it's a good size element and I'll put the numbers here for what the cargo space is on the front. But that simple engineering, that simple take of just making this part open as well and being able to lift and unload um, loads into this much easier, especially when you do it for a living. I tell you folks, if you ever have to load and unload stuff consistently, backs, arms, right? So a little thing like this makes a big difference, but it's just something to highlight. So you've got tie down hooks, you've got a nice element here. It's fairly deep. It's uh, probably about uh, four or five inches deep where you can put charging cables and some odds and ends here. Uh, you've got a nice floor. You can take these off and clean them. Of course, you have access to your 12 volt and stuff back here, some hooks. Of course, you have your plugs here. Uh, so you have a bunch of 110 plugs and a 240 plug, my understanding here, or 220, like if you wanted to plug in a, a portable welding unit. And again, using this as a workspace, right? Something different that you that people may, would not have been able to think of before in an internal combustion engine because you don't have that. So being able to do a lot of stuff here uh, is really, really nice. Big trunk. Hey, tailgate parties, right? Put a George Foreman grill up here or uh, you know, a big couple of coolers of ice and off you go to the races. Keep up, um, you know, production of your jello shooters and you're there, man, I'll tell you. 
But I, you know, I'm really just stoked about that. And of course it's got lots of lights and then press the button twice, give me the nice beep and then off it goes. So nice and smooth. And we'll lock down and protect the contents in there because it's all lockable and sealable. All right, so getting access to the rear bed's pretty easy as well. You can do this through the key fob, press the button twice, and the tailgate's actually automatic and will fold down as I get out of the way here. So you can see that folding down in a nice manner and unlocks it. So pretty cool. Again, lots of workspace. I mean, you have measurements here because Ford knows their customers, right? They know what they want. And this, as Carlos said, is an F-150 pickup truck. They haven't changed the usability of this. In fact, they've added more use cases and a better usability for this truck by being electric. And of course, we can unlock this if we want to step in. That folds down. We have our step to get in there and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, these are built to be used. These are built for work environments. Put that back here. And then I'm not gonna release the tonneau cover because it's on there very nicely, but it's a good sized bed, all lined, all protected. So you can throw your stuff in there. And, and if you wanted to put more accessories and stuff, you can. And as Carlos mentioned, pretty well, all the accessories that are available for the internal combustion F-150 pickup trucks are available for the electrified ones. So if you have a, a you know roof rack or something going on, pretty high chance you'll be able to swap it from an existing to a new vehicle or purchase it just like you would for internal combustion. So great going forward. And then when you want to get this out of the way and your hands are full, you forgot to maybe close it, push that key fob a couple of times and off it goes to the races um, to close it up and uh, simplify that operation. Quick backup cameras, all that kind of stuff. And you can manually release things too here. So you've got that capability. Um, but again, just make, make life easier. It's not as complicated. Um, uh, as the GM offering is going to be in the Silverado with their tailgates, but it gets the job done. And uh, again, good use of space here. All right, so as we discussed, um, there are a couple versions of the battery pack here uh, for this uh, machine. This is an all wheel drive, dual motor setup, one on each axle. axle. Uh, two battery pack options. You have a 98 kilowatt hour or 131 kilowatt hour battery pack, giving ranges uh, from 230 miles or 370 kilometers to 299 miles or about 480 kilometers range. Carlos is saying he's seeing over 490 in the summertime with this. So really good range numbers on that extended battery pack that Ford calls it. As I mentioned, that power goes to two motors creates a really good amount of horsepower and torque because that's what you need from these vehicles. You need to be able to carry payloads, pull trailers, pull weights with these and towing capacities, and of course, move people and stuff around. So all those two motors and all that power combined to give you 426 horsepower and 775 pound-feet of torque. Now from a charging perspective, it has two charging ports on this vehicle. Just pop it open here. And here we go, we have our standard J1772 and then our CCS uh, of course, for fast charging adapters. I'll put the numbers up here of what the AC and the fast charging rates are because I just can't remember them at this moment while I'm filming, but I'll put them up on the screen here. Again, fairly simple. It's got a light here, unlock, charging, all that kind of stuff. Um, I like that Ford has put them on one on each side, so a little easier depending on how you're coming into a charging spot to be able to charge up the vehicle. Now, one element uh, I always show you guys is trying to get into the rear seat. Well, on something like this, I really shouldn't have any problem getting in here. If I do, then I'm getting too old. But as you can see, it's a cavernous door open. Uh, opens almost 90 degrees perpendicular to the vehicle. Uh, got a nice uh, step here. Grab bar. Boom. You're in. How much easier can that be for a bigger guy like me? Gotta love the space. So, as I mentioned, lots of space. Easy to get in and out have those grab bars, have the, the running boards here to help your steps down. Everything is really nice, gotta love it. Right, if we just give you a quick look at the uh, interior here, again, if you're familiar with an F-150 pickup truck, there's really not gonna be much differentiating this. And as we said off the top, that is a bonus for buyers because what Ford didn't want to do is get their buyers to think, oh, I gotta relearn everything, I don't know where anything is, all that kind of stuff. You know, I've, there's lots of things that I have to do. And that's not the case with the uh, F-150. Everything is in its familiar space. This is the platinum version. So obviously it has updated seats and more Nick's, you know, more power settings, more luxury settings. And that's one of the higher end or not, uh, I think it is the highest end trim model that you can get with some options on that. You can go down to a middle level and then your base level with the uh, 
with more like a work truck, you know, base work truck environment. But very nicely outquitted, you know, uh, uh, equipped, outfitted. Let me just get in here. So, let me put this on here. All right get in here and show you everything so i won't go through all the menuing system on the displays but simply everything is where people are expecting it to be with a nice size uh, binnacle driver's binnacle cluster lots of wheel controls for different elements right but including your cruise controls your distance your lane keeping uh main menus all that kind of stuff that you can um uh that you can do uh so that's that. Now, of course, this is no stranger because we've seen this on the Maki, but the big um, portrait uh, display that's here that gives you all kinds of functionality to what you want to do. You can put Apple CarPlay, all that kind of stuff home. I do like this volume button. I, st I still kind of like having just a manual button that's for volume because that's probably one thing that um, we, we go to a lot. But, you know, a lot of different things. Of course, you've got your drive modes uh, and off-road and stuff. You can uh, do additional settings on here as well if you want to raise the height. You have your camera, so there's lots of different ways to, to look at cameras here. And, of course, parking assist. And I can uh, zoom in and look at some of the different angles if, if I'm trying to get into a spot. Um, certainly good for people that aren't familiar with um, you know pickup trucks and and of course they're big units so being able to to look around and then you have your backup camera here nice nice uh, back actually that's a front view camera that one because I'm not in reverse so we can get out of the camera mode what else we got going on so different ways of accessing the unlocking the charge ports charge port light all that kind of stuff opening opening the front uh, things like that if you're towing you can do the, the things to set up for for adding for uh, having a trailer on board and the smart hitch setup if you have that option and if you as you're backing in it will help you um, be able to center that the onboard scales is a cool feature there's actually a, a, a led element set in the back here but basically once you've loaded this vehicle up it, it'll give you a weight a rating of uh, how much payload you've put into the bed which i think is a cool feature for those that are moving a lot of stuff and don't want to overload the vehicle a nice to have different lighting elements around the zones uh, of course you can you can play with all that stuff so lots of different things that you can do here um, uh, the pro power on board is cool again it tells you that uh, that uh, how you how much you have in reserve you can set up some limits here as far as how much reserve you want to keep so you don't drain your battery by doing all that all that kind of stuff and that's a big element that power vehicle to grid vehicle to load technologies you have parking assistance uh, which i'm not going to have any time to play with today and intelligent backup power as well this is where you have the ford charge station pro mixed in with the uh, in-home inverters and equipment so that if you uh, have all this set up and your truck is plugged in and you get a blackout um, it will uh, the house will automatically switch its power source from its current grid over to the the f-150 and will keep you going it could be three four five six days depending on your power loads so again really really nice and we're seeing all the, the oems that are bringing pickup trucks now to that lots of seat settings here because this is a higher end uh, uh, trim package in the platinum so platinum so i've got massage and stuff like that and then valley mode so you don't want anybody driving uh, mount uh, kilimanjaro in this thing so you can limit them so pretty easy controls and easy menuing systems to set up all that kind of stuff um, then you have of course your hvac which is only always nice in here i like that there are some physical buttons for different attributes for trailering We've got some 12 volts as here as well here and you have a computer plug which is nice because this does offer the 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 ability to um if i push that button here to use this as a workspace let me just get to that so see how the transmission folds down and then i believe i have to remember how to do this lots of cubby space here i believe that i have to slide this down like that there we go so there's your workspace just like that i've converted the center console into a workspace i have a power plug if i need to put a laptop in again so many people are using utilizing their pickup truck as their remote office right as their workspace so you know things like this that ford has offered they continue to bring in into the electrified version and just make it easier and better so well done for them Lots of storage space here, lots of cup holders, all that kind of stuff. I need that transmission. I need to get going soon again. Push that button oh, and off it. Did I stop it? Let me do that again. Push that button and off it comes and for your normal shifter. Again, so everything's familiar. Got a charging mat, uh, some USB-A and, and uh, C plugs. Lots of space, uh, lots of cubbies in the door pockets. Uh, grab handles here for getting in and out. Uh, again, sunglass holders, big mirrors. 
big mirrors and a nice panoramic sunroof that I believe has a roller shade that will let you close that. Yeah, there it is, if I can find that. Oh, that's a rear shade, okay. I'm doing the rear shade, that's the rear window. So you can open that rear window back there um, and but I'm sure that there is a roller shade here. I just have to figure out how to turn it on because there's so many buttons, so little time. So really, really nice front. Now let's take a look at the back seat. All right, so the rear seat again, lots of uh, similar items that you will know if you're a pickup truck owner and user. Uh, big, big bench uh, back seat here. Obviously three people in comfort. Even the middle is not gonna be squished. Okay, we love seeing flat floors. This has a nice big flat floor. Of course, I believe there's some underfloor storage here as well that you can get access to. You can fold up the seat and get access to that. So lots of nooks and crannies for storage. Let me just climb in here. Uh, you know, standard mat pockets. Got some HVAC venting controls with heated seats. The outboard seats in the back here are heated. Again, big cup holders for some of those. Um, this is the Platinum package, so the seats have the badging, some nice upgraded leather. Pull down the center armrest, arm and we have some leftover stuff here, <laughs> which I'm not going to use, though, some lip balm and a mask from somebody else, but hey, that's good for, uh, for them. Uh, again, lots of uh, storage, nooks and crannies. This has a really nice stereo system, my understanding. Um, so it's a very comfortable, lots of legroom here, very comfortable environment to be in. Uh, high ceilings, of course, I've got a fist or more of headroom and I'm about 5'7 here and that's with this panoramic roof. So you got no problems for, with um, sitting back here, very comfortable and being belted in. So uh, good job uh, on the uh, inside. All right, so as I've poked and prodded uh, the F-150 here and gave you all the details, now let me go take it for a drive. All right, so here in the driving the F-150 Lightning, and uh, I don't have a lot of experience with pickup trucks. So, you know, only when you rent and move stuff, um, never really owned one. Um, I used to drive one when I was in high school quite a lot, uh, but it was a, it was just a single row one, older GMC product. So, so my first impressions, obviously the seats are really comfortable, by the way, I've been, you know, there's no lack of adjustments to find perfect seat um, always takes me a bit of a time to kind of settle into a seat nice and comfortable uh, very padded uh, very supportive uh, but from a driving perspective let me give you my first thoughts I mean this is quiet so um, as you saw when I took um, some b-roll of the tires these do have smaller tires on them they've uh, swapped them over to the winters now so they're going to be slightly louder than the all seasons would have been. That's just the nature of winter tires and they're slightly smaller. So they'll, they'll, roll, they'll spin a little more obviously because the circum circumference is down a bit. But I'm, that's not coming through to me. Um, this is an extremely quiet cabin for the size of the cabin that it is, right? And for the platform that it is being a pickup truck. Um, Ford has done a great job at quieting the road, quieting the, the, the sounds that you hear coming from the tires and from the road. And, um, and the wind noise, of course. We have just a slight breeze blowing here today. Very, very slight as this, this fog is slowly starting to lift. Um, so I'm going to, let me see here. I'm going to go uh, probably up uh, north a little bit of the city here. Uh, and just try to get a little bit of speed element into this uh, where I can and do some stop and go as well. So let me, um, let me make the left turn here and then go a little bit of distance. So. Now, let me see if I can get into the driver settings here because I wanted to see if this has um, a one pedal driving. Oh, there, I think it's going to be down there. There we go, additional settings. Let me see. So one pedal drive. Oops, I just had it and then it went away. So I want to engage one pedal drive. Okay, so I've got one pedal drive engaged now, which is just a simple selection on the menu, really easy to find. I've let my foot off the brake and that means that the... Um, Typically with one pedal drives, you'll see an icon, you'll see that the, the car will hold itself and then use the accelerator, of course, to, uh, to accelerate. And then as you feather the accelerator back and forth uh, for both moving forward and for braking, uh, it will use a combination of regenerative braking and uh, the physical braking to slow and stop the vehicle. And uh, I can tell you folks that most EV drivers, owners, once they uh, that have 
a vehicle that supports full one pedal drive because there's a few there which don't go all the way with it they go almost all the way but not all the way um, you tend to learn it relatively quickly how the uh, how that uh, feathering and how the touch is on the accelerator and how to time your slowdowns and things like that sure there are times where you're gonna have to jam on the brakes there's no question but once you learn the one pedal driving system it's really easy and it just becomes intuitive uh, I, you know, I'll, I'll relate this. I've been driving now EVs with one pedal for four years. So for me, it's just easy to get in, a, in any EV and kind of learn that, take a couple minutes to learn it. And I, I reference that too when I learned to drive a standard automobile. Once I was able to learn the, the, the clutch and the shifting and get comfortable with that, I could go into any standard automobile and just, but with a couple of shifts, be confident in my ability to drive that vehicle. Just knowing where the release point was on the clutch, where the engagement point was on the clutch, uh, what you know, how far you had to do it, all that kind of stuff. Understanding the revs of the car, and then going by sound and feel, and just changing by you know shifting gears that way. Well, it's very similar to one pedal driving and some of the EV aids that we have. So I came to a stop here. I did not touch the brakes at all. I just let off the accelerator. It was a nice smooth stop and, and once I got closer to where I wanted to stop is let off a little more and the car brought itself to a complete halt and of course engaged the physical brakes. Now so I'm not going to be talking about range or efficiencies because I don't have the car that long and we are getting into again the colder climates now we're getting into we had some snow a little bit of snow on the ground that's why we had some fog because we've had some warmer temperatures it's currently four degrees celsius so we are going to see a tw you know a 20 to 30 percent rage drop quite easily over the winter time and and this is going to suffer from no less but you know at about 370 380 uh, kilometers on a full charge today being cool that's pretty good again that i could go to downtown toronto and back and still have a hundred kilometers if not 150 kilometers left over so there's a lot of range that's available on these uh, even in the winter time on these electric pickup trucks i believe this is the extended range range model because he can he told me he could get up to 490 so this will have the 131 kilowatt hour battery pack in it but you know for my driving i'm driving down here this main street it's got some bumps um boy the suspension is just eating these bumps up like there's nothing very very um a little little impact to myself as the driver or if there are passengers i kind of I do a tim hortons test where i'll get a coffee and then i'll kind of hold it here and i'll see you know if, if i have, can keep my elbow rested on the console without it without the coffee air ending up on me or uh or not and or i have to lift my arm and kind of use that for balance and i know in my tesla i have to lift my arm because the suspension even with the change uh, is still harsher than i like it to be well this would probably fare pretty well on that coffee test because the suspension is absorbing the bumps and that's one of the things of course um, that people are, are realizing with the electrified f-150 is that it has that independent rear suspension and it's going to eliminate a it's going to help the road mannerisms more in combination with the low center of gravity and that big battery pack in the middle here that i'm sitting on really going to add to a much better vehicle driving dynamics especially for a pickup truck and then if people that are used to pickup trucks that don't have rear independent suspensions most of them that i'm aware of are used to the bed hopping that you can get sometimes going over bumps or maybe taking a bit of a turn and that kind of stuff and, and just you could feel it well you won't get that with this because of that independent suspension it will absorb it and keep the bed grounded as well uh, on that even without a load so very very nice um, boy this has been a comfortable drive it's only been 10 minutes now if i look at my count uh, but this has been a really really comfortable drive. bit of it uh, a, a thicker a pillar here i'm noticing as i'm getting in so i kind of maybe have to look a little this way a little this way kind of look around the a pillar but again that's part of the structural integrity of, of pickup trucks right they, they are pretty strong so you need those those thick pillars here um, so uh you know it's not a big deal it's like anything you get used to it you get used to your visibility and to your, uh, your your blind spots and things like that um there really isn't much of a blind spot on here um from just a general sense um because i can see to the side that big second back window which is low uh, is very nice i like i like having these low windows because a it helps with you and seeing the rear mirror and then also on sideways visibility especially for the uh, the rear uh, obviously since it has a bed i won't be able to say all all that way back there but the nice uh, rear mirrors and then I'm, of course i'm pretty sure that this has yes it does it has blind spot assist uh, and all that kind of stuff so they'll get a light in your in your mirror when somebody comes up beside you and they're in your blind spot 
Um, so let me give this a little bit of acceleration here. So yeah, we love that EV torque. I can't go too fast here. I'm still in the city area, but nice, steady, easy torque. Um, I'm in normal driving mode, so I'm not in any of the spirited driving modes here, um, but very, very nice. Um, our fog is lifting, I see, because I can see a little farther from me. So I'm not sure how the ADAS is going to engage in the fog, but I am going to try in a sec. Again, nice clean dash. I'm able to see when it's regenerating, when energy is going back into the uh, into the battery pack as I'm slowing down. The one pedal driving is very, very nice. I think it's a very well balanced of the ability to um, to let off and get that slower slowdown. If you want a more immediate, quicker slowdown, you let off a little more, you'll get it. It's a, it's a really, and then it's got some resistance to the pedal so that um, you've got the ability to kind of really micro play with that pedal and fine tune your, uh, your acceleration and deceleration while in uh, one pedal mode. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, now, let me see if about um, putting the cruise on here and engaging some of these settings. Uh, let's see, we got our lanes here. I'm gonna make that the biggest. And then do I have lane keeping? I'm gonna put lane keeping on. So lane keeping's on, cruise is on. Adaptive spacing is on, and then I've got my spacing. So let's see, is it gonna stay in the lane here? Nope, won't stay in the lane there. <laughs> All right, let me disengage you first. All right, so I've got uh, now the ADAS system going. Um, it's keeping in the lane, it's keeping the space in front of me. I've set a speed limit, um, and it is uh, uh, obviously slowing down now to keep the distance. I think uh, now it's asking me for to keep the hands on the wheel. So it's about every 10 to 15 seconds where it's asking me that. Um, going into a bit of a foggy area here. Let's see, uh, it doesn't obviously read street lamps. Will it lose it? Nope, it maintained the lanes through that intersection. A lot of, a, a lot of uh, lane keeping won't do that as soon as you get through an intersection. So now it's beeping me, telling me to put my hands back on the wheel, turn that torque sensor again. Uh, so I don't have my hands on the wheel. It's actually doing a pretty good job. It does tend to, uh, just trying to get a perspective here. I thought it was ping-ponging a little bit, but it seems to have stabilized a bit. I find that it might hug the, the, the center line a little bit more than I would in normal driving, but everybody's slightly different. Certainly not crossing the line and not going over it. Um, we're going on a fairly straight route, so and that's ideally where these lane keeping and adaptive cruise systems are good for is when you're on the highway and you're not really doing tight turns and this kind of stuff. You're in fairly open areas that the traffic moves and it's basically to help you and provide a relaxing drive. So this seems to work pretty good um, and a really nice, quiet, comfortable, um, and uh, pre this is a premier environment, of course, being in the Platinum trim, but uh, yeah, they've, they've done a good job. So, uh... All right, so let me wrap up this review with a quick summary. Um, I'm extremely impressed with the F-150 Lightning. Again, this is my first time actually driving it. I've only seen some static displays in the past. So I'm not a pickup truck aficionado, so I can't really go into a lot of details, but what I can tell you is it's quiet, it's comfortable, and it's very capable from an acceleration and handling perspective, just in the short time that I've been driving this for about half an hour or so, just to get the feel of it. Um, no, nothing to be scared about. It's a big machine. It's bigger than I'm used to driving. I'm used to driving sedans and hatchbacks and some smaller SUVs, of course, but I do road test a lot of different ones. So um, this is probably one of the bigger ones that I've actually road tested. No fear at all, very capable, very comfortable. Would I recommend this vehicle? Absolutely, I don't think I put enough thumbs up on the screen for this. I mean, Ford, you know, this is one of the tipping points that I outline when I talk to people about the EV market space. When Ford came out and announced an all electric version of this that really was was a, was a phenomenal tipping point to help move and drive and accelerate EV adoption into a market space that would have primarily not been looking at it before. Yes, we have Rivian. Yes, we have Tesla Cybertruck. Whenever Tesla gets there, but this is the good old the good old standard that people know and love. The number one selling vehicle for many years. You know, especially in Canada, as you heard Carlos say, decades that this has been a number one selling vehicle. So Ford has done it right. They didn't necessarily need to, in, in, to um, introduce a brand new platform and a new um, engineering element into this. They took what was existing, electrified it, brought it to you know, uh, uh, some modern technologies and, and techniques and things like that, and have done a really good job. And I, I, and I know, again, some people that have purchased these and absolutely love them. So to me, that's telling that they've done a good job. So well done on Ford. 
Yes, they're expensive, yes, but so are pickup trucks. Like even internal combustion vehicles are not that far off the price point of these. So when you calculate the savings on fuel, which is huge when you get into pickup trucks, it's absolutely huge savings. You know, to go 400 kilometers in this in the summer cost me probably about 20 or $25 in home charging versus let's say about $250 in gas to do that or 200 bucks in gas in an internal combustion vehicle. It's a huge, huge savings. So run the numbers, folks. So again, uh, Absolutely recommend it. Great, great quality truck. And thank you very much, Fines Ford and, and Carlos and the folks here for letting me spend uh, a couple of hours with this vehicle to talk to you folks, to show you it. And I'm sure I'll be back next year to get a more extensive road test and some, some more review thoughts at that point in time. So, all right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this a not so quick look because <laughs> it went longer than I, I thought it was going to be but I think it was really good information and I hope you found it very helpful in looking at the F-150 pickup truck um, and, and the electrification that's going on into an area where people may not think there's a lot of value and there certainly is so thank you very much for watching on YouTube if you have not subscribed please do it mean a lot if you did you can provide some comments if you want to like it that kind of stuff do whatever you feel you want to do that would be great I always like love to read comments and answer them back if you're not sure about maybe thinking about helping me out on Patreon, you can check out the website at the link here and find out what that's about. Even a cup of coffee a month, whatever, would help me with my antics and help helps me do the things that I need to do, travel, that kind of stuff uh, when I need to out of pocket. Stuff which it does, folks, for this. Again, continue to watch the EV landscape. Lots of stuff going on. Can't wait to see GMC's versions of their EV pickup trucks. And of course, Stellantis with the Dodge eventually and on and on and on as this market is going to continue continue to get hotter and hotter. So keep your eyes on the marketplace, everybody stay safe. And until the next show, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.